In Japan, the Nikkei rose for a fifth consecutive day. Construction companies were among the winners after the government announced new measures to help rebuild houses in areas hit by the 2011 earthquake disaster. Jack Deep Chima, Arise News. Joined by Yannick Nod from Sturgeon Capital. Well, you, you wouldn't want to say the world's not turbulent at the moment, but let's look at the benign influences yes. that are making all this happen. Yeah, well, I mean, right now we have some uh, uh, short-term uh, things that uh, are impacting the market. We have the reporting of the earnings from a uh, uh, U.S. company, and I think almost three-quarters of the company beat the uh, analyst estimate, so that was a, it's a positive news for the market. Uh, we had, obviously, uh, last week, uh, Premier Li announcing that there might be a uh, stimulus package uh, in China, and obviously, uh, at the beginning of the week, uh, Mao Draghi in Sintra in Portugal uh, gave some hint on some further monetary easing on the 5th of, of June. So all in all, there's a lot of positive news in the market. We have noticed in the past, and not that far in the past, how the tapering of the U.S. stimulus has kind of taken the impetus away from emerging markets. Are yes. they now feeling this benignness? Well, it was the case at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the year. But if you look at most of emerging markets, except Russia, obviously, mm -hmm. a lot yeah. of them came back. I mean, for a lot of different reasons. Some of them, some specific reason linked to the country, like the election of Modi in India, which was very, very beneficial to the Indian stock market. And some for and for some other country, the domestic policy didn't help, like in Thailand. But nonetheless, the stock market didn't do too bad. Is this about momentum or is this about fundamentals? Well, I think there's two things. I mean, they, we had some short-term, I mean, some recent news. Uh, but on top of that, as long as inflation in developed markets stay very, very low, long-term bond yield will stay very low. I mean, uh, the 10-year German yield is at 1.35%, so almost at all-time low. Uh, rates in the U.S. are lower than 2.5%. It's mean that cost of funding for government, but bank and company as well is very low. They can borrow easily in order to either buy back their stock or do M&A. And this could, you know, this have a very positive impact on the market. We mentioned, Jagdit mentioned in his package there the bit about M&A and tax advantages yes. and so on. Is that driving a lot of uh, United States companies to look at uh, beyond their shores? Yes, traditionally it was, for, uh, it was uh, the biggest thing for the uh, technology company because they have a lot of cash abroad. It's the same for pharmaceutical company. It's not the only reason. A lot of those big M&A are, in fact, in terms of uh, achieving some synergy, cost-cutting, trying to reduce cost base uh, with a uh, bigger scale of, of sales. So all in all, it's not only for a financial, purely financial reason or tax reason, but mm. that's one of the reasons. How's the fear index right now? Let's turn the corner. Yeah, I think, I mean, we have a lot of positive news. Having said, I mean, and it's very difficult to know if the market can go much higher than that. I think it will not perform as, as strongly as last year anyway. I think what is really worrying right now, it's not the absolute level of the market, it's the fact that the level are very, very calm. There's absolutely almost no volatility. So investors think that the market will stay stable or rise gently mm. uh, for the, until the end of the year. And I think we, you know, there, there could be some surprise because the world is, in fact, more volatile than ever. I mean. Well, yeah, exactly. And I mean, and, and the other thing is, is, is that banks themselves are under stricter control now and can't react as they would have done in the past to variations. Yes, I mean, technically, bank usually used to provide liquidity to the market when there was some big sell-off, and they were using the balance sheet to do so. They can't do it anymore since uh, 2008 because the regulator make the cost of uh, uh, capital much higher. And therefore, if we have, if we see technically a big sell-off in the market, not only in the equity market, could be in the bond market, corporate bond market, mm. banks are unlikely to step in in order to uh, the keep the market from not, from not falling. Despite all this, do you get the idea that there are still mountains of cash around the market waiting to look for a good home? Well, if you have cash, it's true that the return on, uh, on your cash is very, very low because uh, when the 10-year yield is uh, sub 2.5%, you, you're not going to make a lot uh, uh, keeping the cash aside. So right now, we didn't see a lot of M&A involving higher growth. It's mainly M&A in order to cut costs and to have a higher synergy. So it means that, in fact, the confidence of CEOs and CFOs is positive, mm -hmm. but not that positive yet. So I think, you know, until we see that, until we see that uh, uh, manager of company uh, are confident that there will be growth, that the uh, consumer will spend more, yeah. mm -hmm. that could be a positive news. But right now, we're just between the two. Lovely. Stay around, would you, for later Thank in the programme. For the moment, thanks, Yannick. Now, let's look at some...